Hi, this is a short presentation of the research output called IMRAD. I hope this may address some of your concerns regarding how you will present your output for this course. IMRAD is actually an acronym for Introduction, Methodology, Results, and Discussion, which tells us that those are the major sections of the IMRAD presentation. After presenting the results and discussion, it is being followed by the conclusion, recommendations, references, and a short curriculum vitae of the authors. During the discussion on how to write chapters 1, chapters 2, chapter 3, 4, and 5, part of chapter 1 is writing the introduction and then we are given there the six guide questions on how to write the introduction. Since IMRAD does not have those five chapters, the review of related literature and studies is actually integrated in the introduction. On what part of the introduction? Remember, uh, the third uh, paragraph in writing the introduction is to uh, include the studies related to your study. So after writing those studies which is related to your present study, you have to follow it with the literature which answers your objectives in the, in, in the order in which your objective is written. So as written on this slide, for the first paragraph, just the same. To what broader area of specialization does your study belong? So that's the... That's the rationale, isn't it? When we do the introduction, it is inverted pyramid. So we start with the general. So what's the broader area of the specialization? And then what's your study for the second paragraph? You describe your study, you explain your study, you give its possible uses, and why is your study important? For the third paragraph, you account studies conducted related to the general objective of your present study. For the fourth paragraph, you account literature that answers your number one specific objective. For fifth paragraph, literature that answers your number two specific objective. So it tells us that if you have four specific objectives, there should be uh, another four paragraph that must be included in your introduction to answer all those objective and then for the eight paragraph if you have a specific objective number five then same procedure as paragraphs four to seven what you should keep in mind is that all objectives shall have their corresponding answer coming from the review of related literature and then for the ninth paragraph what problems did you see that pushes you to make your study cite references supporting your claim that such problems really exists kailangan uh, uh, hindi lang siya na observe kundi talagang there are literature that tells you na ito talaga yung problema ipagdiinan niyo ano ba yung problema at uh, naisipan nyo ng gumawa ng ganitong study. Otherwise, kung wala namang problema, then you don't have to do this study. And then for the 10 paragraph, what's the objective of your study? So the, you start with the general objective is to reiterate your title. Specifically, it will aim to. Ilagay nyo na yung mga specific objectives. And then for the 11th paragraph, how may your study contribute in solving the problems you mentioned in paragraph number 9. So that is how we do the literature anchored on the objective of the study anchored on the instrument of the study. That is why you would come to realize that each part of the research is really uh, anchored 
on the other parts. That's why when we do research, parang impossible na si chapter 1 ang gagawa si member A, si chap si chapter 2 si member member B, chapter 3 si member C. And then independent of one another, it cannot be because uh, all the parts are connected with one another. So how do we make the objective? The general objective is simply a reiteration of your title. If the title of your study is SSMTS Alumni Website, for example, then uh, the general objective would be stated as uh, the general objective of this study is to develop SSMTS alumni website. What about the specific objectives? Nasa 10th paragraph na po tayo, ha? So, the specific objectives is formulated by following these steps. One. You get first the instrument of your study. Meaning to say, bago ka gumawa ng research, you have thought of your topic. And then, it is better if you find an instrument right away. Especially if you do not plan to make your own instrument. Why? If you do plan of making your own instrument, then you have to really read a lot. And then based from the literature, you have to come up with your own instrument. However, it is not advisable because it would take a lot of your time. Validation of instrument would uh, take around two months, the fastest, because it has to undergo a lot of validity and reliability testing. That is why... Uh, I personally would not recommend you to make your own research instrument. And even me, ako, doctor na ako, pero hindi ako naglakas ng loob na gumawa ng sarili kong instrument. Why? A research instrument is a product of one research. Uh, parang gumagawa ka ng qualitative research. And then from that qualitative research, your output would be the instrument of the study. So, ang paggawa ng instrument ay isang research na. That is why uh, it is not really being recommended when you are doing your undergrad thesis. So, again, the first step when you have already identified your topic is to look for a standardized instrument. Pag sinabing standardized instrument, these are research instruments that has already been used by previous researchers as evidence by its uh, publication in the internet or in other uh, educational journals. So, if you already have your instrument of the study, step two is to state your specific objectives chronologically based on the instrument. So, yung inyong objective ay nakayakap pa rin doon sa inyong instrument. Just like what was being discussed in the video for RRL tips. So, kung ano yung pagkakasunod-sunod noong mga tanong sa inyong research instrument, ganun din dapat yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng inyong specific objectives. Walang biglang lalabas na objective na wala naman sa instrument. So, kung ano lang yung nasa instrument, yun lang yung lalabas sa inyong specific objectives. Let us have an example. In this instrument, wala tayong makikita na demographic profile, di ba? Like age, gender, marital status. So, pangkaraniwan, lumalabas yan. Pero dahil wala sa instrument, wala dapat lalabas na ganun doon sa inyong specific objectives. And therefore, if this is the only instrument of your study, we have started with the general objective of this study is to develop uh, an SSMTS alumni website. Specifically, it aims to, one, evaluate the website in terms of A, efficiency, B, effectiveness, C, satisfaction, 
the learnability. So yan lang ang magiging specific objectives if this is the only instrument that we have. Ganun lang kasimple. Example number two, we are given here the instrument of the study. So as you can see on the instrument, the first part asks for the profile of the respondents. And then it is being followed by the different uh, parameters. So since there is a part there which asks for the profile, then the specific objectives will go just like what is written on the right part of the slide. One, determine the profile of the respondents. Number two, describe the design of the prototype. So makikita nyo yung unang criteria dyan, design. And then number three, assess the materials used in the fabrication. Diba? After the design, doon sa instrument, you have there the materials. And then for number four, specific objectives, we have evaluate the prototype according to the standard evaluation parameters. So you could see here, you could see here that the number three, uh, number three criteria in the research instrument is the standard evaluation parameters. And then under that number three, we have there the functionality, reliability, usability, portability, workability, and safety. So if you would notice kung ano yung pagkakasunod-sunod sa instrument, ganun din yung pagkakasunod-sunod doon sa specific objective. And then this is being followed by narrate professional comments on the development of similar devices. And then last one is confer the expert's recommendation on the prototype. So kung ano yung nakasulat sa instrument, ganon ang nakasulat sa objective. At lahat ng objective ninyo, again, dapat masagot siya ng literature bago pa kayo mag-conduct nung mismong uh, data gathering ninyo. Para bago pa kayo makakolekta ng data, may idea na kayo. Ano ba ang sinasabi ng literature tungkol sa design ng prototype? Anong sinasabi ng literature tungkol sa mga materials na ginagamit sa pagbuo ng ganitong prototype? Ano bang sinasabi ng literature tungkol sa mga sa mga recommendations, sa mga comments, sa ganitong device, sa ganitong product, sa ganitong project. After the last paragraph of your introduction comes the conceptual framework. So I just copied this from the discussion that we had, from the recorded video that we had, which tells us that your conceptual framework would most probably use the IPO, the input process output framework because you have your, your output, you have your product, you have your project. Uh, wala namang gagamit siguro sa inyo ng IVDV because this is not an educational or social science research. After the conceptual framework comes the methodology. Under the methodology, you have the research method and technique. You have to write there what method. Is it quantitative, qualitative, mixed method? If it is mixed method, what kind of mixed method? Is it exploratory, explanatory, convergent mixed method? And then you define the research method. You, you cite the source who gave that definition and then what research design is it descriptive uh, descriptive applied descriptive developmental and then you define what descriptive research is you cite the source and then uh, if it is an applied research, you define what an applied research is. Is You cite the source. If it is developmental research, you define what developmental research is. And then you cite the source. Most probably, you would ask, ano po ba descriptive research? So, pangkaraniwan, lahat kayo papasok sa descriptive research. Meaning to say, uh, research... Uh, which focuses on describing the present scenario. 
and then it would also be it may also be an applied research or developmental research applied if there is already some similar kind at mm, nagdagdag lang kayo ng innovation or developmental research kung totally wala pang ganyan at kayo yung kauna-unahang nakaisip ng ganyan. Ngayon, for example, yung mga pastillas na ginawa dat ng mga nakaraang batch, since meron na mga pastillas in the market at parang gumawa lang sila ng panibagong flavor, then that is an applied research. Ngayon, kung totally talagang wala pang ganun sa market, then you may consider your, your study as a developmental study. And then the technique. So, did you use survey or did you use interview technique or did you use both survey and interview technique? If sa method niyo ang nakalagay is quantitative, then it tells you that you only did a survey method. If sa meth a survey technique, sorry. If sa method niyo ang sinabi niyo is it is it is a qualitative uh, research, then your your research technique is interview method or open ended survey questionnaire. Ngayon, if you use both survey and interview techniques, more or less, your method is mixed method. And then after the research method and technique, you would write in your manuscript the respondents of the study, the instruments of the study, the data gathering procedure, and the data processing and statistical treatment. After the presentation of the methodology comes the results and discussions. So your results and discussion would again follow the order of your objective of the study. Kung paanong sinundan natin yung objective sa paggawa ng review of related literature, ganun din natin siya susundan sa pagpe-present ng results and discussion. So as you can see, on these slides and on the succeeding slides, meron siyang iba't ibang presentation. For example, the first one, two out of five. So, parang sa frequency siya, no? You write an explanation of the statistics. You answer your specific objective number one. So, kung ano yung, yung specific objective number one that would be the subtitle the first subtitle of your results and discussion and then you would uh, support your answer with the literature that you have so siguro dito ma-appreciate nyo ganun pala ginagamit yung literature hindi pala siya basta nilalagay lang kasi yung ating mismong findings titignan natin kung yun din ba yung sinabi ng literature or kabaligtaran ba siya ng sinabi ng literature? Or wala bang sinabi yung literature na tumugma sa findings nyo? Then in that case, that would be your contribution to the body of knowledge. And then kung, kung na-present nyo na siya first ng 2 out of 5, second way of presenting is to use the percentage. So you answer your specific objective number 2 naman. And then you you support or negate it with the uh, literature that you had in your introduction. This time, a bar graph is used to answer your specific objective number three. So, you will present the result of your data gathering and then you compare it with the literature that you have included in your introduction. Either it is supported by that literature or uh, it is in contrary with what the literature suggests. And then you cite the literature supporting your findings or negating your findings. One thing we have to keep in mind when presenting the results of the study is as much as possible, 
use different visualizations to avoid boring presentations. If, for example, you answered specific objective number one through a table, then for a specific objective number, you to consider using a bar graph, a line chart, a pie chart, or any other uh, visualization that is different from what has been used in answering the prior specific objectives. In that way, your presentation becomes more interesting to the audience. So you use that both in your manuscript and in your uh, PowerPoint presentation. Conclusion. What can you conclude based on the results of the study? So this would come from you being the researcher. What conclusion can you draw based on the results and discussions that you have made. In the conclusion part, you don't include here any more figure or explanation to support your conclusion. Why? Because the results and discussion serves as the explanation. So you just come up with a uh, conclusion, which is also anchored on your results and discussion recommendations based on the conclusion of the study what can you recommend remember start your recommendations with a verb action word and then last part is the references you use my bib for referencing uh, it is free. You just type it from Google, M-Y-B-I-B, and then uh, you try to explore it. You just uh, click on the URL. You paste it on the space allotted for the URL, and then automatic citation is done. Once all the references are there in your MyBib, at the end, you have you just simply download it and then copy to your manuscript uh, as an additional productivity app. You may also use the public or parish for literature search, the Google Scholar. And then for you to paraphrase, you use Killbot to minimize grammatical error. You use Grammarly. And then remember that the plagiarism of your paper should not exceed 10%. Otherwise, it will not be accepted for presentation, defense, or publication. That's it. Pansy. <laughs> so we're done. And if there is any questions that you have in mind, feel free to ask because we never know that would be the same question that your classmates have and it is important for you to be able to come up with a quality paper. Remember that I am expecting a scholarly work from you. And I guess by now that uh, ends our discussion. So good luck and happy writing. God bless.